Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Bishop is trying to do the soup thing, but this soup thing, I don't know. But God is good. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. We should have worship service. This house then is just fire. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. Father, we pray, oh God. Are we about to listen to your word? Father, I change my tongue into the blood of Jesus. I download every, every word, oh God. Every word. Every word. I download every word. Uh, whatever we say, we glorify the name of the living God. Give God glory, give God praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. This morning, I have a word that will be a blessing to you. I have a word that will, will change your life. I have a word that will just, just glory, glorify you or bring you glory to say it that way. This morning, we have prayed. We have seek the face of God, and God has spoken. Heaven is open, and we pray that the hand of God will be mighty. The hand of God will be mighty, I know. This morning, my message to you is resist the enemy. Resist the enemy. Amen. Amen. You see, when I say resist the enemy, this morning I want you to understand that resisting the enemy comes with a work that you have to do. It comes with work that you have to do. Amen. Before we, we read on, let's go to the book of Psalms, 103 verse 12. Yes, some 103 verse. This, this is one of the Bible. I actually goes to question and he gave me this Bible verse. Psalm 103 verse 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. Yes. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions This from morning, us. I want to prophesy this morning before I begin the word. That's here is the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit opened my eye. He gave me this word. He said, because I asked him, I said, you see all this thing going on? That now we are stuck at home. What is the assurance coming from heaven that will assure us as children of God that whatever we are doing, we are covered by the blood of Jesus or we are covered with the blood of Jesus. And he opened my eye and I saw the book of Psalms 103 verse 12. He said, for as long as the east is far from the west, so is everything going on around Around, around America and around the world. If you are listening to me, I want to prophesy in your life that 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 says the spirit of God. Ah, uh, with my eyes open and I saw the book of 103, Psalm 103, verse 12. It says, For as the east is far away from the west, so as coronavirus far away from you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Are you understanding me this morning? This morning I want to speak into somebody's life. This morning I want to speak into somebody's life. I, I did not know that the way we look at the east and the west, heaven looks at it different. It means that in the books of heaven, the east and the west, they will never come together. They can never cross each other. They can never be friends. They can never see each other's face. And so the Bible says, I should tell you this morning ah, that for as long as the east is far from the west whew, Holy Ghost Father I thank you you see I began to study the word and the Holy Spirit says resist the enemy and the enemy will flee and I, I said to him I said do you know how many times you have been fighting this guy but I don't think he's flying I don't really think the guy's going anywhere. Amen. I said, take the word. Let me show you something. Amen. Let's, let's read the book of James 4, 7 to 9. Or 7 to 8. Uh -huh. James chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 
Yes. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Mm-hmm. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So so listen to this. Listen to this. He said, Holy Spirit told me, he said, Josh, the devil will not go away. Listen to this carefully. He said, the devil will not go away. Okay? The one thing that we have, the one pillar that we have is to resist him. And once you resist him, he will go. And when he goes, he always come back. But he said, you have to resist him. Amen. He says, submit yourself to God and resist the enemy. And when you resist him, he will flee. It means that when you resist the enemy, the enemy will move away from you. But when he moves away, he will come back and you have to resist him again. So you have to keep resisting him till the enemy doesn't come back anymore. Then you are good. But for as long as you are on this earth, whether you like it or not, you have to resist the enemy. I want you to understand as a child of God that no matter what you do, you have to resist the enemy. That is one of the rules. And as we go, you understand. Read on, please. Draw nigh to God. I uh-huh. will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, so listen, this morning, for some reason, Sunday, Saturday to Sunday, I can't sleep. I have to just read, 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 read. I can't sleep. I don't know why, but I can't sleep. So, when, when I read this verse, it says, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. But listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, it says, clean your what? Cleanse your hands. It says, cleanse your hands and cleanse your heart. So, look at something. So, when I came here this morning, the Holy Spirit said, he said, God, he said, Josh, do you know why the Bible said, clean your hands? I said, no. He said, sit down, let me show you. He said, you see, the hands and the heart. He said, these are the two things God is looking for. He said, do you remember when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples? I said, yes. He said, do you remember what Peter said? He said, he said, he said Jesus, don't just wash my feet. Wash my hands. Wash my whole body. So he said, when the Bible said cleanse your hands, because when you read it literally, it makes no sense. The Bible said wash your hands. If you are not careful, you go to the kitchen, put a soap on your hands and wash your hands. But the Bible is saying that when you resist the enemy, when you resist him, you keep resisting him and he keep coming back and you don't know what to do. It feel like anytime I resist this guy, it comes too fast. One of the key that you need is to spiritually wash your hands. And when he say wash your hands and wash your heart, what he's trying to do is find Pastor Josh. And say, Pastor Josh, I, know I need you to wash my hands. Wash my feet. Because spiritually, the washing of the hands and the feet is a spiritual symbol. Spiritual. That's what the Holy Ghost said. He told me, he said, listen. He said, Josh, the washing of the feet and the hands is a spiritual symbol to God. That when he wash you, you are clean. So it's a spiritual symbol. So when the Bible said resist the enemy and he will flee, it said come close to God. Once you come close, you, your feet and your hands, they need to be washed. I said, wow. So once it is washed and your heart is clean, it, then in the eyes of God, you, you, tend, you have spiritually cleansed yourself. But if you think you can just uh, go to the shower and just take a shower, it won't work. Pastor Josh had to clean you up. Listen. Listen to this carefully. Pastor Josh need to wash your hands for you. Amen. Wash your heart for you. Then you can move close to God. That is the cleansing because I did not understand why he said wash your hands. What what does wash your hands got to do? But this morning, the Holy Spirit made me understand that the washing of your hands is the spiritual symbol that God is looking for. 
So when you wash your hands and you clean your heart and you understand, hence, the book of Psalms 144 verse 1. The book of Psalms 144 verse 1. What is, what is the hands for? Okay, so one, it say, wash your hands. Listen to this carefully. This morning, listen. If you are listening to me, you are online, you are listening to me. I need you to find a headphone. Listen to me very carefully. Because I'm about to say some serious things and break something down. Because the way the Bible was broken down to me in my vision, I need, I need to break it down and it will be a blessing to you very very carefully because if you if you are not careful you will take it literally but i want to go into the spiritual mood of the word of god how that why the bible was written why this verse was written spiritually and break it down for you to understand number one that it says resist the enemy he will flee it says cleanse move close to god cleanse your hands and your heart the hands Washing of the hands and the heart is a spiritual symbol that cleans you spiritually for you to move close to God. It is not a physical cleaning. So when you come and say, Pastor Josh, uh, things are not going on well in my life. I want to start some prayer. You have to come to church, find a bowl of water, wash you, and pray for you. And once you are prayed for, you, you move into a brand new one brand new something between you and God. It starts everything over for you. So look at what the hands will do. When you watch the hands. It says, it says I'm handling 144 verse 1. Listen to this carefully. Blessed be the Lord. It says blessed be the Lord my strength who teaches our hands to war, to war and our fingers to, what? to fight. To fight. So listen to this carefully. It's a blessed be the Lord who teaches our hands to war. It means that your hands, when it's being cleansed spiritually, it becomes a battle, what, tool between you and the devil. So there are some of us, we are walking around. You are not cleansed, you are just fighting. You need spiritual cleaning. And when you have that spiritual cleaning, when you have it, now your hands are ready for war. When you say your hands are ready for war, it doesn't mean your real hands. It means that spiritually, the connection between you and God has been created. So when you stand the way you pray and you are praying, whatever you are doing, the actions you are doing when you pray, it stands as war in, the, in front of the enemy because you have been cleansed. Amen. Amen. Look at what I had to say. Bible says, for where your treasure is, that is where your what? Your heart is. So if you don't clean your heart, if there are some things that you are still holding on to it, it is easy. That is why the Bible says cleanse your what? Yourself. Else if you are holding on something, because let's listen to this. The devil is looking for the heart and God is looking for the heart. Whoever, the devil is looking for you to have some dirty things in your heart. When he sees that, he comes and he deals with you. When your heart is clean, he can't come. That is why the Bible says, say, where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. Amen. When you read the book of Shams, it says, it says, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew the right spirit within me. You see, when I read this thing, eh, I've come to understand that Christians, you know what is going on. Whew. I think most of the things that we do as Christians, we, a lot of them need to be corrected. Amen. A lot of them need to be corrected. Amen. Because after I read this, then I said to myself, hey, it means that there is someone, right, who is leading his life now, worshiping God. But maybe spiritually, he needs a man of God. Who need to pray for him to cleanse him? Yes. Maybe that is the only thing that is stopping the door from opening. He, so he need a man of God. 
He needs somebody to clean him up. You understand? He need he need to come to the church, and Pastor Josh will put all the oil on you and pray and break something so that you can move on. Because once you are prayed for, like Jesus prayed for his disciples, we we the men of God, we represent God on earth. We are the representatives of God on earth. So when a man of God pray for you and say you from today, you have the authority, you have the power, you have the mandate to overwrite every evil verdict of the enemy. Once it's been pronounced on you and you start praying, everything falls in place. I think after Corona, I need to do cleaning. Church cleaning. Everybody cleansing. Listen, the Bible said in the book of James, it says, if you have a double mind, you will not receive anything from God. Amen. Amen. He said, who, you who has double mind, say your ways are not straight with God and you don't receive anything from God. Amen. Amen. Let's read the book of James, John eight forty four. John 8, 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Yes. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father ye will do. So, no, listen, to, that's why I said today, everybody needs to be ready to listen. You see, I'm talking about resisting the enemy. You see, you cannot just resist the enemy. I need everybody to understand. If you think that because you have a nice car, the devil will run away, he won't go away. You cannot just resist the enemy. It doesn't work that way. And today I want to break it down. You're going to love this one. It says what? You are for what? Your father. The what? The devil. Uh -huh. And the last of your father ye will do. Yes. He was a murderer from the beginning. It said he was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Yes. Because there is no truth in him. It said there is never a single atom of truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It means that the devil speaks of his own power. He doesn't get his power from God. For uh -huh. he is a liar and the father of it. He says he's a liar and the father of all liars. There is something that he said, when, when, when you read, he said, he was a matter from what? From the beginning. When was the beginning? Listen to this carefully. We are resisting the enemy. Amen. We are resisting the enemy. But listen to what the Bible is saying. Jesus told the people, he said, you are, you are of your father, the devil who is a liar. But he was a liar from the beginning. So I asked Holy Ghost, I said, when was the beginning? So let's go to the book of Genesis. 313. Genesis chapter 3 verse 13. Uh -huh. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Yes. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Hey! And the Lord said unto So wait. Son, so, no, so understand this. We are resisting the enemy. I want you, I want to break this thing down so that everybody will understand. Listen, when you read the 30, it means that the devil, when Jesus came and said, You, you people here, you are of your father. Your father is a liar. He's a thief. He said, Kayla, all of you, you are the same like your father. He said, your father was a murder from beginning. The Holy Ghost said, go to the book of, I said, when, where is the beginning? He said, in the garden, he was a liar from the beginning. But what I needed to understand was that he was a murder from the beginning, but if could not resist him, if could not overcome him by his normal knowledge, so that's why I said today you have to listen to this carefully. If you want to resist the enemy, there are tools that you need to have in place to resist the enemy. You can never overcome the enemy with your own mind. You, find, you can never overcome the enemy with your own might. 
There are tools that need to be in place. There are weapons. There are ammunitions. There, there are bombs that you need around you before you can overcome the enemy. Because the Bible said he was a liar from the beginning. So you are dealing with somebody who is a master of liars. He has a degree, PhD. He know how to manipulate everyone. He know how to manipulate people. I need you to understand that you can overcome this kind of person. You need the tools of God. You need the word of God. Uh, Jesus said he is a mentor from the beginning. But I, I, when I read it, I said, hey, 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 hey. If could not overcome this guy. Whew. I said, no wonder it is very difficult to deal with this guy. If, listen, if could not resist the guy. So how, who do you think you are? That you can just <laughs> Father have mercy on your children. Father have mercy on your children. Because if you leave us alone, this man will murder all of us. He will kill all of us. He will just destroy all of us. Because when, when you read the book of Genesis, he said, if who was created directly by God, he could not resist this guy. That is why Jesus said, you are a murderer. From the beginning, he took them to the, to the beginning in the garden. And he said, if, if, what, listen, when he said your, your, your father, he said you are a murderer from the beginning. He's trying to tell them that, listen, you people, your father, if could not resist him all, he, he, the guy had knowledge. He was able to manipulate Eve. So if the Bible said the devil came to kill, to steal and destroy, he's not talking about right now. The Bible is talking about the beginning. When he was able to manipulate the two of them in the garden, took their right that God gave them. So who do we think we are? Then we can come on earth and small, we are feeling big. Amen. When I understand this, I said, my God. Whew. Second Corinthians. 10 to 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10. Listen to this carefully. You, you want to resist the enemy. Listen to this. Read on. 3. 10 3. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. To 5. 10, 3 to 5. Uh -huh. For though we walk in the flesh. Listen, the Bible know. said, listen, look at this. The Bible said we are walking, me and you. We wake up in the morning. We are walk, oh, Some of you don't even walk. You are always in a car. So we sit in a car. Eh? You are driving. Eh? If you see the devil, keep driving. Listen to this. He said we are walking. He said we are what? Walking in the what? In the flesh like this, eh? So I can put it that God, for over here, we don't walk too much. We are always driving. So if you are driving and you see anything, that is of the devil. Keep driving. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said, we are walking in the flesh, but we do not what? Whoa. Aha. Listen, this is where the problem is. It means that if you are flesh and blood, there is always war. Whether you like it or not, when you wake up in the morning, there is war. Whether, listen, you can think that, you me, I don't care, I am fine. There is war. If, if the devil wake up 5 a.m., he has a war with you. That is why God says, if you are working, then keep working. Do not stop for him. Because when you stop for him, he can kill you. When you stop for him, he can murder you. When you stop for him, all the savings you have, he can take it away from you. So when you wake up uh, and you see another day, keep walking. Do not stop for the enemy. Are you understanding? Keep walking and keep walking and keep Oh, somebody, are you listening to me? I said keep walking and keep walking because when you stop, there is war. And when you stop, you are not ready for the war. Maybe you wake up in the morning, you couldn't pray. You couldn't do anything. 
anything. You wake up in the morning, you take a shower, you are going to work. You are just going. You did not pray. So my friend, you need to keep walking. Are you understanding me? Once you stop, it means that you are ready for war. If you are not ready for war, keep walking. Holy Ghost. If you are not ready for war, then keep walking. If you are ready for war, when you stop, you have to have ammunition around you. You have to have the power around you. You have to have something to stand the enemy. When you stop, I need you to understand. If you know you are not ready, keep walking. I say, for we walk in the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do, we do not, not war. war with the flesh. <laughs> for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I say, for the weapons, listen, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty. mighty they are internet, God. continental, ballet, ballistic missiles. Ah. They are mighty. The weapons that we are given, they are mighty. Listen, do you know that we have power than spirits? Hmm. Let me tell you this today. Human beings, eh? God gave us power than spirits. Mm. One thing God did was God put them in a place that they can see us. We can't see them. But we have power than them. Mm. But because we, we, you see, Christians, they don't teach us. So when we see something, we shake. But spiritually, this is one thing that disturbed the devil. Mm. That I serve you. I did everything. But you created somebody like you. That is the one thing that disturbed him. And he said, no, I am not going to me. I've been here. I'm doing all the job, all the cleaning. All of a sudden, you go down somewhere and you create somebody to be like you. And the devil knows that once someone is created like God, they carry the power, they carry the anointing, they carry, they carry something. So the devil was very, very mad. And he said, for me to bow before these people, I'm not going to do that. Amen. Amen. Read on. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You see, so whatever we do, it has to go through God. Mm. Me and you, whatever we do, we cannot just do it. They say it is mighty through God. Pulling down of what? Strongholds. Strongholds. Casting down imaginations. imaginations and every high thing. That, that, that exalted one to exalt himself. himself above the knowledge mm. of Jehovah. Ah, this morning I prophesy upon your life that anything that want to overcome your life, yes, anything that want to control you, ah, uh, may you have the will, may you have the power, may you have Jesus. the knowledge and flesh every virus out of your system. Oh, if there is any virus coming in close to you, when they see you, ah, I say, may they bow their head down. Uh, I flush every one of them with the blood. Uh, I flush them. Uh, I delete them. I overcome them with the blood of Jehovah. In the name of Jesus. Please watch my time, okay? You see, someone will ask, ask Pastor Josh, say, how do you resist the devil? Because I ask myself, how do you resist the devil? You see, the devil, there are three keys that he came with. There are three keys. He came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. If you understand these three keys, and you watch them, you're going to be fine. The devil came to kill. He came to steal, and he came to destroy you. Christians, someone said, someone, someone said to me, Bishop, how do we overcome or how do we resist him? 1 Peter 5. My time is up. 1 Peter chapter 5. Uh -huh. Verse 1. 8 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 9. Be sober. Hey, listen, you want to resist the devil, I'll teach you today. The first one, be sober. Like sober is like cool, you know. Like be cool, like I'm cool. Yes, be cool. Be sober, be mm -hmm. vigilant. He said, I like the way the Nigerians you say, he said, be sober, but shine your eyes. You understand? Yeah. Be sober, but make sure your eyes are open. You see, this is where, you see, that is why I say that there is a problem when it comes to Christianity. And I will explain to you why. When the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant, mm -hmm. and be what? Because your enemy, the 
because your adversary, the devil, as a royal lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So, so listen to this carefully. When the Bible said, be sober and be vigilant, every child of God, what you need to do is, you need to know how to switch from physical to spiritual. That is one problem with Christians. We don't know how to switch from physical living to spiritual. Because it says, be vigilant. Shine your eyes. Because there is some guy here, he's walking around. When he see that you are loose, he will devour you. And he won't devour you uh, physically. He will devour you spiritually. And remember, he came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So when, you, when the devil see that you, there is some crack behind you, he goes to the crack and he will start draining you small, small. Your finances. Today you have a car problem. Today you have this problem. Then he will start draining. That is why he says by be vigilant. So when you see that, why is it that this year I am fixing this car too much, you know? Like every month there's something wrong with this car. I have to go mechanic, $200. Then the following month, this car, $300. Once you see that, you have to switch from being a physical being to a spiritual bazooka and find yourself one corner and say, devil, I know what you are doing and this thing needs to stop now. In the name of Jesus. That is where Christians, Christians, we have a problem. We don't know how to switch it and everything becomes normal. No, it's not normal. What is normal? There is no normality in Christianity. Hey, that is my good English. My God. Whoo, my God. Today, man. You see, even before you are clapping too much. I forgot my English already. <laughs> I need to I need to go and listen to the I need to go and listen to the recording because I have to keep this one. What? Are you kidding me? Jesus. He says, resist him. He said, there is someone he's walking around. The devil walking around, it's a spiritual walking. He knows where Christians are living. So let's say he comes to this area. He knows Christians here. Mm. Eh? He knows Christians here. So he will find the one that you are weak spiritually. Then he will put a burden on you. Maybe you you lose a job, then you put it there. If you go to work, you see that no, some things are not right. You have to switch. That is where Christians will fall short. Once you see that something, hey, you switch now. On your own, you are not waiting for Pastor George to say we are fasting. No, you are doing your own thing. Amen. Amen. One of the first or the last one is six, Ephesians six ten. It says, "Brethren, it says, finally, be strong in the Lord in the power of His might." Amen. Amen. And say, put on the whole armor of God. You see, if I have time, you see, that is why if you are in church, it's good. If you have time, listen. The way the Holy Spirit broke this thing down to me, eh? this morning I couldn't move. He, he broke it down so good. And this, this Ephesians 6, he broke it down so well. And he said, Josh, you know, when, after he was leaving, he said, Josh, whatever I am teaching you is the spiritual way or the spiritual reason why this verse was written. And I want to break it down spiritually, not the physical, the spiritual, for you to understand. He says what? That ye may be able to stand the walls of the devil. He said, for we wrestle. Listen to this. He said, we wrestle. Amen. Amen. He said, for me and you, we wrestle. But we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. But we rest against principalities. The next time we'll break it down. Listen, I want to I want to thank you for listening to me. It's a blessing. There's something that I, I want to leave with you. You see, the key of resistance has been given to me and you. Use it. When you leave in the morning, you're going to work, you say, God, I resist coronavirus around me. Everything that has a name has an ear. He can, yeah. that, that spirit can hear. 
the virus he has an ear so he can hear he say uh, you have to speak listen to this carefully uh, this is my last one so you have to be careful and listen he said you have to speak the bible said we should resist him amen coronavirus there is a spiritual force behind it and we know resist the enemy when you leave for work you say holy ghost any virus that will come around me i resist you with the blood of jesus I resist you. Let's speak that way. I resist you. You go to work, you come home. Holy Ghost, any virus that will come around my family, I resist you. I resist you. Just keep using the word, I resist you. For as long as you can use it, the devil will flee. He will flee. This morning, be blessed. And know that one of the keys you have to overcome this virus is speaking that the virus will flee away from you. Be covered with the blood. Amen. I seal you. I cover you to go through another beautiful week. To go through another healthy virus free week. Amen. That after everything you are going to give glory to God. May you be blessed. May you be blessed. May you not struggle. May you not beg for bread. When everything is going wrong, may heaven provide. This morning, stay blessed. And remember, resist him, and you're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service. I hope you were blessed. I hope that you share our YouTube page. I just want you to know that you carry the power and the anointing to overcome the enemy. I pray that this week, may God give you the wisdom and the strength to activate that power that he's put in you to resist the enemy. I want you to speak life into everything that you own dear to you. Speak life into your life. Speak life into your household. Speak life into your finances. Speak life into your the enemy will flee from you which will bless you if you please share our page and join us again next week god richly bless you once again